So allow me to thank you all of you and to greet you in this new year. Happy New Year. Hello. Happy New Year. Yeah, yeah, we thank God. We remember how it was last year. We started with so much hope. And along the way, things came crumbling down on us. But uh, in the book of Psalms number, 20, uh, number 66, number 12, the Bible says, you let us walk through waters and through fire, but you still deliver us to the abundance. To repeat here, quote the uko, but we thank God that finally we got to the abundance, to the blessings of the Lord. We have come this far through the blessings of the Lord. If you are keen throughout the last year, we shared so many sermons, and one of it is we had a service with the evangelists. We did it alternatively. We shared about the seven churches, the message of seven churches in Asia Minor, that in the book of Revelation. And in this, I want, today I want us to share from the book of, uh, from book of Acts, chapter, uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 to 7, the message that was in the book of, uh, I mean, for the church in Ephesus. And as I share this message, I also want to remind you we are unveiling our new year of uh, theme, which seems to come to, from the same chapter. And one thing that God is speaking to us and showing us, when you read that the way the angel is told, John was told, light what you have seen and you have heard. Jesus dictated the words. He told them, light it is. And then finally when he finishes, he says, let those who have ears hear what the Spirit is saying. And it says in a very clear way that... Uh, I, I like the way it is opening. But the church in Ephesus was a very lucky church. It was free. It was not recognized at that moment by the Roman Empire. They did very well economically. So they were enjoying so many things. But also the Christians there were also very good because God says, and Jesus, these are words of Jesus because even the Bible they are written in line. What John was taught to write to say, tell them this, I know their works. Praise be to God. When the Lord says, I know, and then he goes on to explain what he knows about them. That is what we call commendation. That the Lord has seen you, has seen your work, has seen all this, what you are doing. And finally he says, I have seen your deed. I know them. And that alone tells you, you are always under the eye of the Lord. But as if you were, Whatever you find yourself to do, whatever you do, whatever you go through, you are ever in the presence of God. That's why he says, I know you. I know your deeds. And what are they? No, he says, I know you toil, you work so hard. That's what he says. You know, he mentions a few things. He says, I know you have been working hard. That's what, what he tells the church. You are not a passive church. You are, you, are, you are active. You do a few things here and there. The Lord himself is telling John, like this, because I have seen their work. I know what they do. And then number two, he says, not only how hard you work, I know you are perseverance as well. You have gone through some hard moments. I know you have been experiencing spiritual warfare, as it is in the book of Ephesians, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 20. Paul giving the evidence or the testimony of how the church has really fought the bad teachings. And then number four, he says, I am also witness that you hate sin. Unachukia dhambi, auchukia watu, unachukia matendo maovu. That is what it is because there are people who are called Nicaraguans. They were teaching, they were advocating immoral behavior. They were advocating things that were and electrical in their time. But the Lord just says, I know you hate sin. Then number five, he says, I know your faithfulness to the truth. I want to see you to see the testimony the Lord is giving about the church. They are doing very good. Actually, this is the church you do all want to be part of. 
that is working so hard to support his people, that is hating sin, that they, they, you know, they love truthfulness, they work so hard, they persevere. And finally, he tells them, I know you have also faithfully suffered because, uh, persecution because of me. Now, when you hear about that, I think that the church here would want to be part of it. That the church here would want to go and worship and stay there among those people who are doing these good things. But then he says, if you, you have done something else that the Lord is saying in verse number four, he says, after all that you have done, I hold you, this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Now, when he talks about forsaken, you have left, you have abandoned. He is telling them, you know it, but you are not part of it now. Remember, this church is doing all those great things I've mentioned there. They do very great things. Even for Sandaka, they want to talk about it. But after all, they want to talk about it. But with all this, something is missing with them. They are not holding on to the first love. Now, what is this first love that they have walked away from? The book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 9, from verse 17, seemed to tell us exactly what it was that, they, that God would want them to continue doing. Acts chapter 19, I'm just waiting for them to project this. But simply, there are so many things they have seen, so many miracles that happened around them, and the Bible says there it is. Can we read it together, this? Mm. They were all seized with fear. And the name of the Lord Jesus was? Mm -hmm. Many? Let's read together. Many of those? openly confessed what they had done. A number of who had practiced sorcery brought their scores together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, mm -hmm. in this way, now, if you want to understand and go to that chapter I've just read, there were so many things that they saw, miracles being done. And when they saw that, people getting healed, they realized, wow, here is what love is all about. They came in great numbers. They knelt down. They did prayers. They gave their things, you know, until the word of the Lord is spread like fire. Because of what they had seen, the Bible says, they, you know, they started fearing. They fell upon, fear fell upon them. And in, the, in so doing, they magnified God. In the book of First Corinthians chapter 13, we read of something else there about love. If you look at First chapter 13, chapter 13, Paul is telling us what love is all about. If you, you can go there quickly, you can see what it means. And if you look at that chapter, Paul is telling them something about love. Where Jesus is saying in a simple way that, uh, and if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. That's number one. And then down there, Paul says in verse 4, love is patient, love is kind, love is not nervous or boastful or arrogant. You can go reading, reading, and then you get verse 7, he says, but love, it bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. And it endures all things. Wow. Amen? That's what love is all about. Now, why was he telling them all this? There is that love that they experienced when their hearts fell in fear. That love of wanting to be like Christ, 
That love that made them give up, even those who are, who are witchcraft, we learned doing the witchcraft, they didn't give up that. But Paul says, along the way, that's what John is, actually John is saying, along the way, you became so much used to it, but that which defined the church of Christ, the love of Christ, it, it, it slowly evaded them, all was left with them is rituals, rituals that they do, is the normal things they're offering. And I remember telling you, offering it does not tell us you are, you are Christian, but it's something that points to you like you could be one. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. Kuto asandaka sio okovu. Na sio kuwa mukristo. Nilakini ninjabu na tuonyesha kama uko kama, unakaa kama. Ata kula kupokea meze ya buwana, it does not define who that you are Christian, but it points us to something of the kind. Until when you have that initial love, that is about Jesus Christ, doing what he was doing. Caring about others. And let me tell you in in book of Acts chapter 2, from verse 45, go and read when you have time. The first church when disciples were meeting in the evening in people's house, the Bible says they used to share bread. That's what they used to do. They used also to read the Bible, do the writings of Christ, do prayers. And finally, they used to share what they have, each according to the needs of the time. Blessed be to God. According to the challenges one had, not who was bigger than the other, not who was tall, not who was rich, but they could bring all they have together and then share with the brethren because they wanted to share this. And the Bible says they were sharing as per the needs. If your need was bigger than mine, then you have it. Because your problem is my problem. Your success is our success. And what does the Bible say finally? When there it says, and as they were doing so, every day there were people who added into their fellowship. Amen? Because people came and saw love. They don't ask you where you come from. Where you come from is not the, 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 the paper to tell us whether you are Christian or not. Where you work, it does not tell us how good you are as a Christian. But all they were interested in is that you have come to the fellowship, welcome. Your trouble becomes my trouble. Your needs become my needs because you know the chief end of man. And I want you to know this. The chief end of man is to glorify God. That's why we do many other things. And I really want to say thank you because just a few weeks, a week or two, you all came together to help us go through the journey we are walking with our daughter. And if you understand what it is to show love, what it is to be a family, that's what it is. Because just a week, all what we needed, you gave us. Now she is taking her medicine. And you know, I remember when the treasurer said, people have given to a tune of 50 shillings. Not what one did. You know, it is not about how much, it's about the love you have. You want us to get out of the hooks where the this daughter is. Whatever you had, you give 50, you give 100, including students who are who in school with my daughter. And we really appreciate. But when I look at it, that is what it is to be a family. When my problem is our problem, when your success is our success. That is the love Jesus is saying. You started it very well, like the apostles did where you could share the bread with everyone, where you could share the drink you have with everyone, where you could greet everyone before you became so special. And the Lord says, as a church, for sure, yes, you have done all these things. Mumevumilia mataso kwa jiri yangu, as antenne. Mumefanya kazi sana, ni ukweli mumefanya. Ata ibada mumefanya sana, lakini kunda upendo ambao unakosa. Upendo ambao ubagui. And that is what Jesus Christ was really walking. You remember when he went to that Zacchaeus place? That's the short guy who, you remember, he was up on the tree. And when he was there eating with them, when he was there, 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 he was And they said, well, it's not for these people. Then I have no business here. He was coming for them. And that is what the Lord is actually talking about. Are celebrating the last love, the first love, 
where we did not care the color, we did not care the, you know, your education, we did not care where the family you belong to, we don't care where you sleep, all we know we are brethren in the name of Jesus. That's the, the first love Jesus is interested in. That is the love that made them leave heaven and come and be born in a very poor place, a dangerous place for that matter, for a child to be born there, just to make us one and to humble us. So that when you are mourning, we are all grieving together. So that when you, there is a wedding, we celebrate together. So that if there is a success, it belongs to us. And that the love, that the church, Jesus is simply saying, you have done so many things as a church, you have given so much, but you have missed one thing, the original love. And we have to walk back to that original love if they see us to be a blessing to us. Amen. Hello. We are being accused of one thing. We have missed the original love. Yes, we give the offering, for sure we do. Oh, yes, we even have all communion because we have just shared. Oh, yes, even Christmas we observed. Don't forget we are here, first we are here. We have observed these things. We have painted the church, it's true. We have done it. Including the roof is now up there, it is painted. Oh, yes, those are great things. The Lord says, I know you are deeds. We have done it. But we are missing one thing, love, and that original love. The love that is patient, the love that cares, the love that believes in all things, that when we are told things can be okay, can be okay. The love of Christ, we are missing that. And for church, let me tell you, this is the time we have to do this as a church. The love I saw, as a family of faith, I'm sure that's the love that I would want to see when we talk about someone who is there out grieving because they have lost their loved one. That's the love I would want us to see when we are celebrating young people who have gotten married. That's the love I would want us to see celebrating the exams, those who have done so well. The love, love that has nothing attached to it, love of Christ. Because when God sent his son, in John chapter 3, he says, I love the love of God so much that he gave his only son. That love, we can make it practical. John is simply telling us, if you want to be true Christians, these are the things you need to take care about. And Jesus tells him like this, three things we are called to do. One, he says, Look, remember how far have you fallen. Remember where you started. Remember how life was good. Remember how testimony was sweet. Remember how salvation was best for you. But now it is no longer there. Remember how far you have fallen. And he says, if you know then, repent. Because when you repent, you resume back to yourself. He is not saying you have refused the love. He says you have forsaken it. Umeyacha. Sikutuba umetupa. The Lord is saying, you have your itupa iko. You can only resume, get back to where you belong. Behave like the way you behaved then when you first believed. And then when you resume, he says, this is good. Because he says, if we don't do those things first, he says, I will withdraw the lap stand. Remember what the Bible tells us in Matthew 5, verse 13 to 16. He says, you are the light of the world, and you are the salt of the world. But you know, as you become the lamp, you have to be standing somewhere on the lamp stand. The one described in Revelation, the seven on them. The church is supposed to be giving light to everyone. But the light must stand, stop or be standing at the lamp stand. And all the Lord is saying, I will withdraw that lamp stand. At the moment it is withdrawn, then it means you can't stand on your own as a church. The Lord is looking at you. The Lord is looking at us as the people who are giving this world an election. People who are giving this world hope. That if people want to understand the love of God, they can just come and observe us, do our things. Well, if they want to see, the Lord is saying, you are the people who should give this world a taste when everything there is not is tasteless. The Lord is saying, you can only do so if you are standing on the lampstand. Pale penye kando inasimama inawaka msuma inasema ntaiondoa. Now the question you need to ask yourself is akiondoa nini itabaki? 
akiondoa ile huo msumaa penye unasimama where will the church stand there is a god who want us to live to the calling there is the god who want us to do what we are called to do and i can tell you for sure and until when we live the calling it shall not be well from us there is that love he says remember where you have fallen remember how things used to work hard these statements are a little so hard on each one of us. And therefore, it's my prayer that all of us today, as we share this great moment, we will stand firm and do the right thing. Love of God. Where a stranger coming to this church, you will feel like this is the best place I have to be. Because you don't, it doesn't matter where you come from, the language you talk, the color of your skin, all matters is you are here in the name of Jesus are the Yombian brother or a sister in Christ. Doesn't matter your education, your wealth, or all this. It is about the original love. And that's why in our theme, we are saying, can we get back to that? Can we redeem that love? Can we give ourselves that life when everybody felt good to be part of us? That is what we are talking about. Where is this? Come with it the love of Christ. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, I'm welcoming you to this room that will be sharing this all year. So that as we walk together this journey, we all be asking ourselves, we will be having more subtopics on this, but the big question is this, are you getting to this spirit of the newness as we get back to the love of Christ? It is there. Oh, yes. Can we read it together from redeeming the first love? Hey, can you read it together with the part of the one to start? Mm, unless you and down there with red what are we saying with red the Lord will be with us when we repent when we go back to that place you no know, I like the way it says remember how far we are from where we should be and let me tell you the moment you know you have lost the way the best thing you can do is to walk back so that we can pick you away and you can get where you are going there is what defined us as a church. And the church of Christ is where love is freely shared because freely we got it. Amen. We, we have just said in our renewal covenant, Lord, when you wanted to walk with us, we were running away, but you came after us. You learned after us when we are prayed. Well, so we've been away from this, and now we want to get back to the basics, doing the right thing, where I am not just a level to you, I am, I am your brother, you know, and you are my sister, you are my brother as well. Where we are working together as comrades, as a family of faith, where the color of skin, the level of education, the amount in my pocket is not the issue. The issue is we are born together by love of Christ. Amen? So that when I hear you have an issue, it becomes my issue. If you are celebrating, we celebrate. We are not here to compete, but to complement one another as a church. And that is what makes a church to be a church. Amen? Now, this is not where people go to do golf and other things. Here, we are here from wherever we come from. We are here regardless of what we do, so that we can share this love of God that we never bought, but God decided to reach us by giving up his son so that he can come and bring us together. So the love of Christ is meant to bring us together, not to divide us. Is there to help us walk together? And that is what disciples show us in Acts chapter 2, from verse 5 or to verse number 52 up there. So may God bless each one of us. We, as we launch this, let's start meditating in our hearts. What is it the Lord you want me to lead to do? Well, how far have I fallen from the grace, from the love you want me to? And when you know the Bible tells us, walk back there, nothing is being asked of you but to go back and we walk as love. Amen? So this is what we launch it in the name of God the Father, 
God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's appreciate our God for this. <laughs> and therefore, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, now may you know the hope which God has called you, experience the riches of his gracious inheritance in the saints, and trust is incomparably great power of us who believe. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.